Hello everyone. So, yes, so I'm going to talk today about the Freemasons and the Shriners. And I wanted to let you know that I did some digging and I did some reading and I did some watching on videos and stuff. And um, so what I want to do is present to you what I found. And um, surprise, surprise, it seems that, yeah, they are a very mysterious uh group of people who do a lot of things behind closed curtains. I can't provide anything particularly fascinating uh, in regards to this. However, what I will say is this. Now, we hear a lot about the Freemasons and this um, Illuminati, um, the Skull and Bones Society and various other, you know, what is labelled as conspiracy theories, okay? One of the groups that I was particularly interested in looking into a little deeper was the Shriners. Now, when you're looking into subjects like this, it's really difficult to get sources that you can verify. You know, it's hard to read something and understand, you know, is this real? Is this true? So what I've done, I've just taken it at face value and I'll just come to the conclusion that yes, the Freemasons do worship Lucifer behind their, um, you know, in their secret meetings. There are things that they do that are very, very dark, mysterious. But they've been around a long, long, long time. I've been watching various documentaries. I've seen people who have just said, you know, no, there's nothing to worry about, nothing to see here. It's just a fraternity. They've been around a long time. Um, it's about the brotherhood, you know. And then I thought, well, you know, there are so many groups like this around the world. There are so many. Um, Muslim Brotherhood is another one that I would consider a cult as well. You know, they were, um, they have meetings. They have secret meetings. They openly um, profess that they want the return of the Khilafat. So they want their, in their perspective, a one world government um, by Islam, of course, the Khilafah. But the Shriners, let's go back to the Shriners. Now, they openly declare what God it is that they worship. They've said it. They've said, let me read something to you. Candidates for induction into the Shriners are greeted by a high priest who says, by the existence of Allah, and the creed of Muhammad by the legendary sanctity of our tabernacle at Mecca we greet you I ain't gonna go into the rest of the details because I don't want to be uttering those words to be honest with you so there you have it I mean what the, what is the deal with the Illuminati the Freemasons and the Jewish control the Zionist control over the world where you've got the Shriners who are actually a little above the Freemasons and their allegiance is to Allah and Muhammad and the shrine in Mecca. So if people want to make out that it's the Jewish Zionist, um, you know, conspiracy to for world domination, you see, because they want Jerusalem and they want to govern the world from Jerusalem, you know, the 70 nations within the Sanhedrin, all this, oh my goodness, I tell you, the stuff you find on the internet is just, it's so draining. That's what I mean, it's hard to verify sources. What is, what am I reading? Can I verify this? Is this fact? Is it fiction? Is it hearsay? Is it conspiracy? So, okay, because when it comes down to the Freemasons and the Shriners, every, basically every Shriner is a Mason, but not every Mason is a Shriner. You have to achieve the various, you know how it works, the um, the various steps to the Freemasons, the various degrees, okay? You've got to enter the, one of the highest degrees, whatever, in order to become a Shriner. So it seems to me, from what I'm reading, at face value, that the Shriners are above the Freemasons. So that's another level we're talking about. And that level is giving allegiance to Allah, Mecca and Muhammad. So, do we therefore say it is in fact the Muslims that are ruling the world because they are at the top of the pyramid, whatever. You see, this, I mean, this whole thing, I wouldn't give much mind to it, but if it is, 
the way I'm saying it is, then, you know, Lord Jesus have mercy, you know. What should our response be to conspiracies or dark um, secret societies? Like, what should our response be? What is it that we can do to change anything? We can't change anything, you guys. It's just the way it is. I've looked into so many of these reports online about, you know, oh, and most some of these channels, all they do is talk about the blinking Freemasons, the Zionist control over the world, they've got every president in their pocket and whatever. It's draining. I mean, I've spent well, how many days on this topic and I just felt so spent. I was desperate for the word of God because that's my life source, you know, Jesus Christ and fellowship with him. Yesterday I did a video on this topic and I was going to upload it and I just deleted it because I was so like miserable I wasn't you know, I just did not feel the presence of the Holy Spirit So I've regained my composure and I would like to give a response and I'm going to turn to the Word of God In the Bible You see the thing is people People assume That this if you like, all right, how to put this, please stay with me, all right, <laughs> people assume this cult, whatever it is, secret society, it ain't very much of a secret, is it, most of their stuff is out there, so how is it a secret, they do secret things, but it's not a secret, I mean, presidents are involved, nations and leaders and you know, musicians, artists, all sorts of people are involved in this blinking cult, cult thing. The thing is, what do we do with it? What can our response be? These people who worry and they call themselves Christians are so worried about the blinking Zionist control over the world. Like God is not aware, like he has no clue, he's a step behind and these people are a step ahead. No, where's your faith? Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He knows everything. Why do you think when he returns to set up his kingdom, he's going to come with great wrath? He's going to be angry. Is it any wonder why? All this wickedness that's going on within these secret societies there's no is it any wonder why jesus is so angry when he returns so we put our faith in the fact that on that day vengeance will be carried out real justice will be done i suspect that this pedophilia ring that's going on at the moment around the world it's all a part of these i mean they're in charge of it you know they have to be there's something really sinister about it. I'm not denying that he ain't sinister, of course it is. You know, they blatantly worshipping Lucifer because they think he's a god. It's ridiculous, isn't it? The light bearer, they call him. You know, that's abominable. Jesus was tempted by Satan, remember, with the very three things that he mentions in the book of James, I think it is. Is it in James? Um, I wrote it down here. The pride of life, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh. This Lucifer being um, offers these very things to those people who would be enticed to say, yeah, I want, I want all three of those things. He offers them the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. He gives them whatever it is they desire. So these people who are in the cult, they know what they're doing. They have denied the, uh, the Lordship of Jesus Christ blatantly. I don't care if they've got the Bible in their on their altar. Ultimately, they, you see, the Shriners they elevate the Quran. You see, that's the book for them. Mystery Babylon. She's the mother of harlots. You see, the mother of harlots. You know, like we say, you know, the mothership. You know, the mother of all wars, the mother of, you know, it's like figuratively speaking. So whatever this mystery Babylon is, is you know, these guys are in there as well. Definitely. Absolutely. The world is full of wickedness. You can almost hear the cries of the innocents just screaming out. 
what are we going to do? What are we going to do about this? You know, God will judge all these nations. He's going to judge all these nations. Although they think that they might have their allies, and there are numerous, there's so many of these people within these cults, they're practicing deceit, wickedness, in darkness, and God will not be, he's wiser. He alone declares the end from the beginning. When you look at the Shriners and what they wear, you know, the hat, the long, is quite long, isn't it, and they wear it. They have the crescent moon, the sword, the star. They've got this dude on there called like a pharaoh. Uh, it's actually called, it's a sphinx. It's an Egyptian strangler, also known as father of terror in Arabic. So I wonder if that imagery that they have on their thing, the shrine, is, well, it's an antichrist, isn't it? It's an antichrist thing. Let's see what God's mind is on this. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. <laughs> I hopefully, you know, some of you are not disappointed with this video because you know it's not um it's not a conspiracy fest, you know. I'm not I'm not gonna entertain it, I'm sorry, but I'm not. Isaiah 46. If you read the whole chapter, it's very telling. In the opening verse, it says, Bel bows down, Nebo stoops, their idols were on the beasts and on the cattle. It's just amazing. The Bible is so, it helps, it grounds me. I'm grounded when I read the word of God. Because I was looking into all of this and I'm like, well, so what's the solution? Like, what do we do about it? What can we, we can do nothing. We cannot do anything. We can increase awareness like we really need to because it's already out there anyway, isn't it? What more can we do? The verse I want to focus on is in verse 10, just to show you something. Let's start with verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. That's the word of God and that's what he that's his um, counsel. That's what he says. So if the Illuminati are in control of world affairs and they instigate wars and they set people up, you know what? They think they're running the show. No, they're not. God has this way of using the wicked and he allows them to do whatever is they're going to do. But ultimately, he's going to work it out according to his will. Not like he works it out according to his will, but he's sovereign, you know. He's Lord God Almighty, all might, all power belongs to him. So we shouldn't even have to worry about the Freemasons. We don't even think twice about, well, you know, we're really in a lot of trouble because God obviously is not capable of dealing. No, he is. Another verse, Isaiah 44 verse 24 thus says the Lord your Redeemer and he who formed you from the womb I am the Lord who makes all things he makes all things who stretches out the heavens all alone who spreads abroad the earth by myself he did it all by himself <laughs> verse 25 listen to this who frustrates the signs of the babblers and drives diviners mad who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolishness <laughs> these people think they're enlightened right they're illuminated oh my lord jesus I believe what they do when they get inside these secret chambers and when they do their rituals and stuff um, in honor of, of Lucifer, they think they're receiving enlightenment, illumination, wisdom from Lucifer, right? The light bearer, apparently. 
God says. <laughs> He's going to frustrate the signs of the babblers and he will drive the diviners mad. He turns the wise men backwards and makes their knowledge foolishness. <gasps> Amazing. Isaiah 45. Let's go to verse 16. Listen to this. They shall be ashamed and also disgraced all of them they shall go in confusion together who are makers of idols but israel shall be saved by the lord with an everlasting salvation oh so amazing let's continue verse 21 tell and bring forth your case yes let them take counsel together who has declared this from ancient time who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord and there is no other God beside me? A just God and a saviour, there is none besides me. Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that to me every knee shall bow every tongue shall take an oath you see these masons shriners they take these blood curdling oaths right they pronounce on themselves these vicious curses that if they should break the code of secrecy that they would be you know so as so they curse themselves really bad things but the Lord God says, every tongue shall take an oath and shall say, surely in the Lord I have righteousness and strength. And to him all men shall come and all shall be ashamed who are incensed against him. That's amazing. In the Lord all the descendants of Israel shall be justified and glory. I ain't finished, I've got another one. Verse 46, did I read that already? Yes, I did. Psalm 2, let's go to Psalm 2. This is how us believers should be when it comes to conspiracy theories. We can read all the stuff we want on them, do all the watching on YouTube of all these expose videos, and then sit there and say, all right, so what can I do about it? What can I actually do? We are aware. Okay. And then what? What's next? Psalm 2. Psalm 2 is glorious scripture. What I like to do is when I'm, you know, thinking on these things, I meditate on the word of God and I'm pro proclaiming his sovereignty over the world, over the nations, over the earth. This is a spiritual battle. So we respond spiritually. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. Isn't that what they do? And against the Lord and against his anointed. Saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. That kind of stuff is very commonplace in the Middle East, in the Arab nations. You will hear a lot of anti-Israeli stuff about how Israel needs to be wiped off the map and all this stuff. However, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord thinks that their wisdom is foolishness, you know that? The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. <laughs> 
This is a time when a real Jew will truly rule the world. <laughs> you shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now the Lord is giving some advice to all these so-called rulers, these kings of the earth. This is what he says, look. Verse 10. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. We are blessed when we put our trust in the Lord. When we don't put our trust in governments, in politicians, in the rulers and these kings of the earth, even in our own righteousness, even in our own so-called wisdom, our own understanding is foolishness. We must trust in the wisdom of the Lord and in his counsel. <sighs> Amazing, isn't it? Isaiah 47. Oh, we're going back to Isaiah. I missed the scripture in Isaiah. I hope you're enjoying these scriptures, friends. I hope this video doesn't disappoint you. Perhaps some of you were thinking I was going to disclose some new information regarding the Masons. The only thing that I think is really astounding to me is the Shriners connection. That they are, you know, a little higher than the Freemasons and they worship Allah. I think that's quite telling, don't you? Isaiah 47. This whole, the passage of this scripture is um, regarding judgment on Babylon, okay? I consider this prophetic and I consider this in reference to mystery Babylon, who I believe, as you know, is Saudi Arabia. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall be called no more tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind mill, remove your veil, take off the skirt, uncover your thigh, pass through the rivers, your nakedness shall be uncovered. Yes, your shame will be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not arbitrate with a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. <clears throat> for you shall no longer be called the Lady of Kingdoms. See, the, she's mother of harlots, the Lady of Kingdoms. I was angry with my people. God is defending his people. And he's also saying that he's angry at what they did when they disobeyed him. But it doesn't mean he's done away with them. I was angry with my people. I have profaned my inheritance and given them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. He's saying this to Babylon. On the elderly you laid your yoke very heavily and you said, I shall be a lady forever so that you did not take these things to heart nor remember the latter end of them. Therefore hear this now, you who are given to pleasures, who dwell securely, who say in your heart, I am and there is no one else besides me. This is what Babylon, the kingdom, really thinks about herself that I'm me, no one can touch me. I'm never gonna be a widow. God said, even though I gave my people over to you, I'm still gonna judge you severely. Uh, let's continue. Verse nine, but these two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day. And you know that mystery Babylon is gonna be destroyed, I believe in an hour, her destruction will come. In a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood, they shall come upon you in their fullness because of the multitude of your sorceries for the great abundance of your enchantments. You trusted in your wickedness. You have said no one sees me. These people who are in these secret societies and they have their secret meetings and their rituals, they really think no one is seeing them. Like, like God, he doesn't see. He sees everything. 
You have trusted in your wickedness. You have said no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge have walked you. And you have said in your heart, I am and there is no one else besides me. Therefore, evil shall come upon you. You shall not know from where it arises and trouble shall fall upon you. You will not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon you suddenly, which you shall not know. Stand now with your enchantments and the multitude of your sorceries in which you have laboured from your youth. Perhaps you will be able to profit. Perhaps you will prevail. You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you. From what shall come upon you, behold, they shall be as stubble, the fire shall burn them, they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. It shall not be a coal to be warmed by, nor a fire to sit before. Thus shall they be to you, with whom you have laboured, your merchants from your youth. They shall wander, each one to his court, and no one shall save you. Wow. That's a, a glorious scripture and I would also say that when we look at these conspiracy theories we take it to the Father, we say Lord Jesus you know what's going on. You understand what's happening, the wickedness that is taking place, these rituals they're doing, you guys, demonic. And um, you know what, we continue serving the Lord. You know, we can't get caught up in this stuff and just stay there. Oh, let's expose this, let's expose it, let's expose this. No, we've got to, you know. I hope this makes sense to you all, I really do. I don't know. <laughs> Tell me what you think. Okay, thank you. Thank you for listening. And Jesus Christ needs to be um, honoured and glorified when we look at this stuff we need to go back to Jesus in the um, the gospel of Matthew I was just about to end but I just thought of another <laughs> scripture in the gospel of Matthew in the beginning the sermon on the mount meditate on scriptures like this you guys because our hearts can be hardened when we see the wickedness that is going out there in the world our hearts can be our hearts can be hardened. Jesus said in verse three, Matthew chapter five. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We desire to be in that kingdom, but there are requirements. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We will inherit the earth. But there are requirements. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I pray that a lot, you know, and ask the Lord, help me, cleanse my heart. Let it be innocent like a child. For they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Read the whole chapter. It's, it's amazing. Matthew chapter 5. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. There are some things I wanted to talk about, but to be honest, it's irrelevant. I wanted to talk about this other chap. I was watching his testimony. Um, he's out there on YouTube. It's a three hour long video, apparently. He's a Seventh day Adventist, however, and he um, has a video. His name is Roger Mornio, um, and he talks about his conversations with. A high priest in a secret society I listened to it, it took me ages because it was three hours long and I found lots of loopholes even in his testimony 
So be careful when we're listening to stuff. We need to verify it. Just because someone's coming out and saying, I used to be a mason, I used to be this, now I'm not, and here. Even their testimonies, let's be careful, you know, because they can mix things in there. Check their doctrine. Is their doctrine sound? Compare it to the Bible. Anyway, uh, I think I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you for listening. Jesus Christ is Lord.